unfailing recurrence of natural hazards in India brings in its wake extraordinary grief, destruction and a heavy loss of precious lives. In the last decade and a half alone, India was challenged by giant earthquakes in Jammu and Kashmir, Bhuj, Latu and Uttarkashi. A super cyclone in Odisha and a horrific tsunami that hit parts of southern India in December 2004. Invariably, in each of these natural calamities, the poorest and the most underserved bear the brunt, rendering them further vulnerable physically and economically. A bold new program of disaster management that works on a people-first approach was initiated way back in May 2000. This community-based disaster preparedness initiative is supported by the Government of India, state governments and the United Nations Development Programme. The heart of this effort is to strengthen the capacities of the local communities to be better prepared to face natural disasters in real-time situations. This initiative of genuine partnership is currently underway in 17 states and 169 districts of India. The districts have been identified on the basis of their vulnerabilities to a range of natural hazards. Kadalu was one of the first districts in Tamil Nadu where the community-centered approach to disaster risk management worked with great success when the tsunami hit on the 26th of December 2004. Samiar Pete village in Kadalu was chosen as the model village to start the program in October 2004. Samiar Pete has a vibrant self-help group movement with 200 active women members. This paved the way for an equal participation of women along with men in the training program. Getting the men in the village excited about the training program was a torn order. And persuading the village women was not any easier, given the lack of exposure to public action. The round is now on the angle when the cooler put them on the other. And all the yard pain and the thing of our matter. How on the inga and the patch could come so drunk. Young even the Varthama tended. La morning is Sulunga, Ungur, Talavera Kutan and Pasolro, Angle Solidan and one day Sigro. Adenberg, Pendle Pajurana, Pendle on the Pachilla, Kumulumaja and the Rumbo Telbu, Angle Veda Pendle Gunya, Votelbu, the Alarang and the Dang. It wasn't long before the village folk started enjoying being part of the training activities. And though they were doubtful about the real usefulness of the training, they treated the training as a village festival and there was fun and games all around. Tsunami, of course, was still an unknown word. Tsunami which struck South Asia wreaked havoc in Tamil Nadu also. The death toll in Tamil Nadu ran to thousands. Each affected village had at least over 100 deaths. The villages adjacent to Samiarpete 
Pudukuppam, Pudupetai and Parangipetai had five times higher number of deaths as compared to Samyar Petai. So how were so many lives saved in Samyar Petai? On that day, a rice dealer, Jaya Lakshmi from the neighboring village, had gone to Samyar Pete on business. She went to the beach around 8.40 in the morning and a huge wave toppled her over. She looked back and saw a bigger wave approaching. She was scared and tried running away but was entangled in some fishing nets. The wave crashed over her. Some villagers pulled her out of the water and put her on a boat. All around she saw people holding on to the trees to save their lives. She felt that she would survive as she was on a boat. But then the third wave crashed on her and she lost all hope. Anjappan, a local villager, saw the waves tossing Jayalakshmi around and called to her to hold on to a tree. As Jayalakshmi was being dragged back, Anjappan jumped from his tree and pulled her out of the slush. He immediately took her to the first aid center organized by the women. Jayalakshmi acknowledges that she is still alive only because of the prompt first aid given by the women of Sami Arpete. Das his father and brother had gone to fish very early in the morning. An inner instinct told them that something was very wrong. The sea was behaving strangely. They decided to return to shore. As they returned, they saw a deserted beach with broken boats lying all around. Das was among the 200 fishermen of Samyar Pete who were at sea that fateful day. If they had been warned in advance, they would have remained on the sea where they were safe. Das reached the shore after the second wave had wreaked havoc. His brother tried warning him. Das and his family were swept away by the third wave. Das had the presence of mind to make his father hold on to a coconut tree Naguran saw the sea being unusually turbulent that day and realized that he had a decision to make. Either he could take care of his family or go and try to save his boats. He realized that his wife Girija was perfectly capable of taking care of herself and their family. So he went to his boats. He got worried when he saw the choppiness of the sea and sent his son back to warn the village. Meanwhile, their daughter alerted Girija of the danger and both of them ran, picking up whoever they could, all the while warning the villagers to run. The prompt action of Girija and the members of the warning group saved several villagers who otherwise might have been trapped inside their houses. As the waves receded, the men rushed into the sea to rescue as many lives as they could. With their boats broken, they were forced to resort to improvised rafts of plastic boxes, broken pieces of wood, empty barrels, cut logs of wood. Suddenly, each person remembered distinctly all that they were taught. What was initially a joke to them became a matter of life and death. Meanwhile, the women set up the first aid center near the Rauntana. As the men brought the victims back, the women would give immediate first aid before they rushed the patient to the hospitals. Each member of the community, man, woman and child, were actively involved in handling the enormity of disaster. By the time help from outside reached them, the villagers realized that they had already saved 50 or 60 lives. Yedrupara the and the Ari 
எந்த பயிற்சியாலும் நமக்கு கொடுத்தாங்களோ அந்த பயிற்சியை கொண்டு நாங்க மருத்துவமனைக்கு அழைச்சிட்டு போற வரைக்கும் எங்களால செய்ய முடிஞ்ச மருத்துவமனைக்கு அனுப்பிச்சோம் ஒரு பெண் என்று அவங்களுக்கு ஒரு துணிச்சலை கொடுத்தது ஒரு நம்பிக்கை வரவாச்சது நம்மளால எதையும் சாதிக்க முடியும்ன்ற ஒரு தன்னம்பிக்கை வந்தது எல்லாமே வந்து அந்த பயிற்சினால ஒரு தைரியம் சார் உள்ள இருந்த ஒரு அந்த கூச்சம் அந்த ஒரு நம்ம ஒரு பெண்ணு நாலு பேர் முன்னாடி போகக்கூடாதுன்னு ஒதுங்குன ஒதுங்கி இல்லாம சமமா பெண்ணுக்கு ஆணுக்கு பெண்ணு சமமா ஆனா ஆண்களுக்கு பயிற்சி கொடுத்தாங்க ஆண்களும் இதுல ஈடுபட்டு செஞ்சாங்க எல்லாருமே எல்லாரும் அவங்க சொன்னது பிரகாரம் எல்லாருமே திறமையா செய்து முடிச்சாங்க சார் You made comparison of Pudupetai, Pudukupam and Samirpetai village. Even we have analyzed the number of deaths and the location of deaths. And all the data revealed clearly that this village, it was the variable which has worked is the training and capacity building of the people before the calamity. In any disaster, the maximum number of lives can be saved only in the first few minutes. And it is only the affected community which can best take care of itself until outside help arrives. Samiar Pete is an example of how people can help themselves in saving precious lives when nature strikes in all its fury. Because of the training which was given to the people at Samiar Pete, they were able to save more lives, they were able to rescue more people. they were able to provide first aid to more people they were able to guide people better through the entire course of that disaster this usefulness of the training and the capacity building which has done been done at samir pete and the way they have used it in the course of the tsunami you know reiterates the need of such training to be duplicated replicated and given periodically at all other places in the country oh,